Hi, I'm Matt Wright from Wright Food and today I'm going to be talking about chicken in my very first video post. So I'm not talking about this, the culinary monstrosity that is the boneless, skinless chicken breast. I can't even believe I have this thing in my fridge to be honest. Um, you're honestly going to get more flavour out of cardboard. So I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about this, a proper free range pasture raised chicken that's been free to roam around and peck at things and has led a decent life. And I know it sounds all kind of hippie BS, but if you've got a chicken which is raised naturally and raised how a chicken is meant to be raised, so it can run around, move about, peck at worms and all of that good stuff, the taste difference is just incredible. If you want to taste a, a pre-packaged chicken from a big grocery store and a small local properly raised chicken, the, the difference is outstanding. I'm sure everyone's had the grandmothers that sit there and they say, oh, chicken doesn't taste like it used to. Well, it's true, it, it doesn't, because back in their day, they'd get chicken from um, kind of local purveyors that cared for the animals and raised them properly, whereas now most of the chicken we see is battery farm chicken, and they'll they'll dress it up with little signs on the package saying free range and all of that good stuff, and that really just means they can turn around in their cage, so, you know, that's, that's not a valid option. So, what I'm going to do with this guy today is I'm going to roast him, and this is one of my favourite ways of cooking chicken. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do really is season him inside and out, and then we're going to truss the chicken. Now, trussing is something that you either obviously do or you don't, but in the culinary world it seems like there's a big division of people that say you should truss chicken or you shouldn't truss chicken. And trussing chicken is just tying it up to make it very nice and compact and what happens is that the legs kind of come in and they help protect the breast a little bit. It keeps the whole thing a little bit more compact, keeps the juices in, it makes for a neater presentation. I personally think it makes it cook more evenly, some people think it makes it cook less even evenly. So I, I always like to truss a chicken, um, like I said, it makes it more compact, I think it makes it more flavourful. So the first thing we're going to look at is just how we go about seasoning this and how we go about trussing a chicken. Okay, so trussing a chicken. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually season the chicken inside and out. Um, obviously, once we do truss this thing, it's going to be really hard to season them on the inside. So let's go ahead and season the bird on the inside first of all. So what do I use for seasonings? Well, I really, really like a good amount of salt and pepper on a chicken, um, especially on the outside. We want to make sure that this skin is going to go really crispy. And the way to do that is to put a lot of salt on the outside, which is going to help draw the moisture out of the skin of the chicken, and it's going to make it extremely crispy. As a herb, there's a, there's a lot of herbs I like with chicken. I think sage goes really great with chicken. Um, but I really like rosemary with a roast chicken. So I have a little container here of some chopped fresh rosemary. And in here I've got a mixture of some coarsely ground sea salt and some freshly ground black pepper, also coarse. So the first thing we're going to do is just kind of stand this little puppy up on his end and sprinkle in some rosemary. Good helping of rosemary in there and also a good sprinkling of salt and pepper on the inside. The next thing I'm going to do is make sure that I can get some salt and pepper into the joints of this chicken. So, once this thing's trussed up, all of the joints are going to be closed and I'm not going to be able to get any seasoning in there. So, I'm just going to put a little bit of salt and pepper in the joints between the legs and the wings, and a little bit of rosemary in there too. Not a lot. Okay. So now comes trussing. So trussing is just really tying up a bird with some, with some string and making sure that it's kind of nice and compact and kept together. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is deal with the wings. So grab your chicken and bend his wings back behind the, behind the body. And you can see now they're just kind of tucked neatly, uh, neatly behind there. So that, that's kind of keeping the back end together. And we need to now kind of work on the on the front here, and what we really want to do is make this a nice kind of compact chicken with the legs kind of crossing up, and you can see it kind of really plumps the breast up quite a bit. And to do that, we're going to tie them up. So get yourself a piece of string, probably about four foot long, 
um, depending on how big your chicken is, of course. And we are then just going to start by tying up across the breast and over, over the wings. So take the center of your string, roughly the center, and put it over the top here of the breast. And we're now going to tuck it under and cross it over underneath his wings. And this is going to help hold the wings in place. These, these bits of string here, are now going to come up either side of the breast. And if we pull this, you can see it kind of plumps up a little bit. And I'm now going to cross it over. So this one that's come up the far side, I'm going to cross him over and just twist him a couple of times around the drumstick, the end of the drumstick of the opposite leg. And I'm just going to do the same for the other one here. I'm going to twist him around that one. And kind of cross it back over and pull it tight. And you can see now that everything is starting to kind of be compact. So now if I just kind of cross, cross this over underneath, and pull it tight again, we're holding the whole thing very tightly together. I'm just going to bring it up onto the top and tie a knot off on the top here to make sure it all stays in place. Now you can, if you want to, you can flip the bird over and instead of doing this last loop up, you can actually um, just kind of tie him on the back here if you wanted to. I personally, I, I don't want to flip the chicken over because I, I want to make sure that it all stays kind of neat and tight, so I just kind of loop it over and um, tie it up on the top there. So that's trussing the chicken. You can see that we've got uh, some string left over. We just grab some scissors and we can just trim this up. So with that trimmed up, we're now going to just finishing off seasoning the outside of the bird. So again, a lot more salt and pepper and just kind of let it rain down over the top of the chicken. You want to get a nice even coating of salt over the top of the chicken. And now for some rosemary as well. Make sure we've got a bunch of rosemary over the top of this guy. Get it in some of the jars. God, that smells good. And there we have it. He's, he's really now ready for the oven. So when it comes to cooking a chicken, um, what I like to do is actually use a small sauté pan. Um, one that's kind of a little heavier than most. And this I find just keeps, keeps the heat in a lot better than a roasting pan. So you're going to keep a lot of heat around the bird, which is going to really help um, crispen up the skin. I also, I don't like to put any fat in the pan with the chicken. Um, so I find that um, any kind of fat or anything could make some steam, which will stop this skin from crispening up. So I don't put any fat in the pan. Also, when you first start, start with the chicken, make sure you dry them really, really well, because again, you know, if there's any water on the exterior of the chicken or on the inside, again, that's going to create steam, which might stop this from crisping up really nicely. So, what you want to look for after you've seasoned this is to make sure that there's still, you know, there's a good amount of salt on the outside of the skin. And I like to use sea salt because it doesn't seem to break down so much when I roast. So, when it comes out of the oven, you can still see those kind of little crystals of salt over the top, and it's just a really nice little kind of presentation detail.